the game can see the boxing boys. <laughs> Speed. What? 
Why this nose with that hook? Cruiserweight division, like he's a big bully, even though he's not the biggest man in boxing down with one shot. He's gonna show skills and what makes the difference. Hand speed, foot speed, skills make the difference. It's gonna be the fastest cruiserweight in the division, very short. Gotta get this work done though. <laughs> To the 17. 16. 17. Oh, okay, okay, true. <laughs> true. <You> hear that? <laughs> That's the problem. Some guys stay focused. One. That ain't every day right there. <clears throat> Smart and sharp. So, uh, we have to do a few and A's. It's like the, the new era of Madison Square Garden, the Barclay Center has kind of replaced that and um, made it the big show, you know, so it's like, man, it's like, I made it, you know, or, you know, until I fight main event there, but still, co-main cool event, NBC, prime time, I made it, you know, it's, um, it's, this is big, you know. I'm under the umbrella. I'm under the pause umbrella. <laughs> now, so, you got, um, <laughs> you got a great legacy already. You got two world titles. That's what I got. I got a legacy. <laughs> USBA heavyweight champ. Yeah. You know, you, you've yeah, done no, a no. lot. Now, what would being champ for the third time as a cruiserweight? What do you think that would do to your 
your memory, your legacy? Uh, I mean, I, I, I read somewhere. I try not to read a lot of uh, interviews and stuff about me or fights during fight time, but one did crawl, cross my vision about, you know, if I win this title, I should be an easy candidate for the Hall of Fame. So I was like, wow, that motivated me. Yeah, that was right there. Yeah, yeah. All right, my man. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so. They put cruiserweights in? Yeah, exactly. So I'm, uh, that motivated me, you know. I mean, even if it's not true, it's still motivation. Um, I will be, I believe, in the Pennsylvania Hall of Fame. That's that's awesome from, you know, being a snot nosed knucklehead from North Philly, you know, uh, in the 80s and 90s. But uh, now, you know, getting to any Hall of Fame is beautiful. But winning that third title would, would mean would be great for that aspect of it. And it'll be, it'll be like, a, um, not that I told you so, but a, a C look, you know. You know, C look, look, you know, hard work pays off. Um, all the stuff we did at heavyweight, you know, uh, just, just, it'd be like a just, you know, you see the stuff he was doing, and it should make people go back and, and rehash my heavyweight career, you know, uh, my heavyweight run. But, you know, I think First. it puts a, yeah, it puts a, um, it puts a big, a big exclamation point on, on the end of that part of his career, you know, just like three times, a lot of people can't do it once. You know, so I'm trying to do it a third time, man. Blessing, blessing, no doubt. Do you um do you look at this as a you come back as a cruiser, you're fighting for the title on your first shot. Is this a um a new, like a new uh, era of your career or is this like a career cap? Yeah, I I say I say both. New era and career captain because uh, Steve Cunningham that left the cruise well, you know, when I was cruiserweight I was I didn't have this much knowledge of what I can do, and especially going in there with those big guys, and really, what, what's, how many fights did I have as heavyweight? Eight? Six. Six, seven, something like that? I should only have lost one, you know, but with, with having that, uh, all that experience from them guys, and then coming back, it's like a different cutting end, you know, I'm, I'm, I totally feel different, you know. Um, not, you know, you never look past any fighter, never. Kovaki's a good fighter. He's, um, he did a great thing his last fight. Stopped the reigning champ in the 12th. That's, that takes some cojones, you know what I'm saying? So, and then, no doubt, one of the longest reigning champs, cruiserweight champs. So, um, you can't, we, listen, my team, they don't let us, they don't let me slip. Even if I wanted to, I don't, but they wouldn't let me slip, so. Um, we, I wouldn't be here able to talk with you guys if I was slipping. Nazem would have been killed me, you know, in the gym, you know, making sure he's comfortable, you know, with what we're going to show the world in 16, you know? That's one shot. Um, you. So, Emmanuel, man, talk to us, man. It's been a minute since we've seen you. Uh, last time I'm in PA, I mean, you're here, you're at the uh, Steve Cunningham Media Workout, you're getting ready. Uh, on the 19th, you're going to be in the ring. Just talk to us. I'm going to keep working out. Obviously, we don't want to ruin the, the training. Most definitely, man. Um, I've been inactive since September. I mean, I'm on April 19th. I'm uh, getting ready for that. I'm excited to be back, man. Hopefully, I can stay more consistent this time around. And uh, I'm, I'm just ready to get back in there. What do you know about this opponent? Honestly, we don't even have an opponent yet, but I'm training all around, so that way, when, when they do finally do put somebody in front of them, we'll be ready for it. Now, you said you, you've been inactive since your last fight, but how active have you been in here in, in, in the gym, sparring? How consistently have you been getting sparring? Uh, sp I've been getting pretty good sparring. Tough, tough sparring, even, you know. Uh, some young, sharp guys, bigger guys. I mean, I've seen all the styles, so like I said, whoever they put in front of us April 19th, we'll be ready for them. So you figure you're well prepared? I'm well prepared. I'm more than well prepared. Are well, you looking lean? What, what, what you weighing these days? And I'm walking around about 1, 125, so I'm, I'm, I'm walking pretty close to my weight class. Uh, so April 19th, man. Six rounds, four rounds, three rounds, however long you go, I'm, I'm ready, man. So now, uh, for this training camp, did you take a leave of absence? We know you're a police officer, or did you just do it in between your work schedule? I'm actually working around my work schedule right now. I mean, when, when, I'm, when I have night shift, I'm training during the morning. When I have morning shift, I'm training during, during the night. So it's working, it's working out so far. So uh, who, who's going to be in the corner in terms of training for you? Buddy Osborne. 
get met uh, Kevin Bernard, who's a sergeant in 26 edition. So we got a pretty solid team. Well, all right, brother. Guys. We wanted an update for the site and channel, man, and we appreciate it. We're going to be taking a look at you on the 19th, obviously, and wish you the best. I appreciate you, baby. Thank you, brother. Very focused, he worked just as hard, and, and, and he knows. This is my job, baby, this is a job. It's not about winning a fight. He's won fights. It's not even about winning, just winning a belt. Mm -hmm. He's won belts. It's about him making a statement now. He's at that stage in his career where no way in the world, Steve, yes, you all know him. You guys are from Philly. I mean, there's no way Steve Cunningham should be in obscurity. This guy's got, he's got so much heart. I, I used to tell him something used to kind of make him mad, but it was true. I said, son, you got some losses. If they were on HBO, you'd still be a star. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it was, because he fights like that. You know, you got guys that walk around mean mugging and talking tough and pushing people way in and doing all that other stuff. And we think, the, we account these guys for being the tough guys. You guys know, find a fighter that has more heart than him. Out of all these so-called tough fighters, find a fighter that has more heart than him. I seen this guy, I just stood up and had the towel in my hand. And this dude's getting up off the canvas. I'm like, well, get my towel back in my pocket. <laughs> I, mean, I, I told him one fight, man, I said, no, I was supposed to throw the towel in. I said, that was bad coaching, because I was supposed to throw the towel. When the joke get hit like that, I went in the back and took two towels off. <laughs> I mean, but, he, but he gets up, and he don't get up to survive. He gets up to win. He gets up to win. He has never given you a bad fight. He's going rumble. He's going to, he's going to show up, and they know that. So now, now the television, and he's starting to get. I tell him, that's a statement. That's a, he got him. They want boxers to talk in there. So when you're in there and all eyes are on you, that's your time to talk to the public, talk to the press, let everybody know. You can show everybody what you want to tell. Them. Yeah. You ain't got to say, hey, I'm this good, I'm that good. Do your job. This Polish kid ain't gonna give nothing away. Y'all going to think I'm polling the way the crowd going to be yelling out there. He ain't giving nothing away. Polska, Polska. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. yeah, but he's got to stand up to it, man. He gotta, he's going to have to prove that he's a, 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 an intelligent champion enough to outwit what we bring to the table. I mean, his team is going to have to prove that he plays chess better than we play chess. Because mm -hmm. if he don't, and if he's short without a rook or a pawn, if, if it ain't in full order with a great strategy, he loses, he loses badly. But just like us, I mean, if, if Steve helps this guy, I mean, he, he helped this guy to do better, and we can't afford that. You know I mean, we have to stay focused. And a lot of times staying focused is, let's say you got control of the fight. Are you focused enough to, to stay, stay that road all the way throughout the fight? Because sometimes guys get in control, and they, and they lose their concentration. You know what I mean? So we have to take control early and maintain control throughout. Sometimes when Steve gets, um... No other sight in the game can see the boxing boys.